Hello everybody, Nathan here from the Bible Animated, uh, and we're going to be giving you a quick run through of the different software that we are using pretty much across the border for all of our different programs. I'm going to go through an alphabetical order. So first we have Audacity, which is a free digital audio editor. Right there the web link is. Uh, we will be putting all the links to these in the video description. So you can visit the websites, download them. Um, here it says it is available for Windows, Mac, GNU, Linux. Um, most of the programs that we use are cross-platform, meaning they can work on Windows, Mac, and Linux. I believe the only exception is KDN Live. Um, but everything else, I believe, works cross-platform. So if you're running Windows or Mac, you should be able to use most of these programs as well. Uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty much, you know your standard audio recording program. Um, my levels evidently are way too high, which I don't know why, probably because it's not recording from the right input. input. Um, but that's not really superly critical or anything. Actually, I know it's not because it wouldn't be recording stereo if it was. Um, anyways, be that as it may, I mean, it's, it's basically just your standard audio editor um, but you do have lots and lots of effects you can run on your audio uh, for the most part I mean there's not just like oh some super cool some things but what we use most amplify in this case nothing needs to be amplified we're actually clipping a little bit in some places um, but pretty much we just amplify because recorded audio is not necessarily always the level you want and noise removal, which basic enough. You just say, I wasn't talking there, and I know that's noise. So I want to do some noise removal, noise profile, and then I want to run noise removal again and clean out the noise. And then, actually, I know it's not because it wouldn't be recording stereo if it was. Um, anyways, be that as it may, I mean, it's, it's basic. Assuming you could hear that, um, I mean, again, it's it's pretty much just it took out a lot of the noise. There still is a goodly deal of noise in there, but like I say, it was recording through the cheap built-in uh, microphone on the laptop, so yeah, it's gonna sound pretty trashy. But it did take out a lot of the noise when using a higher quality microphone. It ends up pretty much perfect. So that is Audacity. City. Um, it's really about all there is to it. Uh, we also, it can import, like, MP4s and stuff. So, da da da. So, what we do on, uh, wrong place. Da, 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 da. On recorded videos, sometimes, not always, because the uh, camera actually does a pretty good job with the sound. Um see like here we could say this this audio is a little quiet we might want to amplify it and it'll automatically figure out what the max is it should go to and we'll say you know there's a little bit of noise here we want to take that out and then it cleans up our audio for us so we can so we can clean up our audio in some cases we don't need to because we're standing close enough to the camera that it just sounds good because it's a, it's a nice microphone that's on our camera. Which it better be for the money we spent on it. But that is Out of City. Next on the list is Blender. Um, in this case, 2.67B. But it's updating all the time. Um, now we use Blender for two different things. We use it both for the... Uh, special effects and CGI kind of stuff. And I didn't actually want to do that. I just wanted to refresh the compositing. Here we go. Um, so we have the raw video here. We mask it out, run it through a green screen, mix it with, in this case, a sky background. And we have a stone wall that's created in 3D behind us. So we use it for all the compositing. And then, um, 
Here we go. This is our lovely stone wall that I constructed, which looks pretty ugly on the backside, but that's okay because you don't see the backside. Our stone wall that I'm standing in front of. Just a really simple, you don't actually see this. This is just to cast a shadow on the stone wall behind me. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely a very powerful, full-featured 3D modeling, everything. Um, I mean, you got physics, particles, lighting. You can do texture painting, UV unwrapping. Um, it's very much so on par with, like, 3DS Max and Maya and everything. But it's free, and it's open source. And literally, it's like every month there's a new update releasing. So development is fast pace um i mean there's there's a lot we could say but in the um i'm trying to think of what the word is to try to keep things a little bit shorter we're not going to go through every single feature and aspect um and we got video editing here there's a motion tracker which is also where we do the masking for the green screen so everything outside of this kind of goofy shape that's around my character that all doesn't even have to be processed that just all is turned to pure alpha and then I just have to run the green screen on what's actually inside of the circle around me so it like I said it works really really good uh, and it's always getting better so if you are looking for a program to use for either green screening or motion tracking special effects trying to make something in 3d um, it has an excellent, fairly photorealistic re render engine called Cycles, and then it has the older internal render engine, which is not as photorealistic, but on an older computer, um, it, it's definitely a lot faster than Cycles, but you don't get the same high quality lighting and realistic bouncing of lights and stuff, uh, though you can pretty much fake all of it, it just takes a little more work on your part. Um, but like I say, we could go on and on about all the different features. Uh, if you guys do want tutorials on any of these programs, let us know. We'll see what we can put out. Otherwise, there are a lot of other tutorials out there that are really, really good tutorials on Blender, uh, probably on all the other programs we're mentioning as well. So, I mean, just take a look on YouTube, you'll find them. But if you would like us to create tutorials, drop us a line, let us know, and we'll see what we can put out. But in a nutshell, that is Blender. And we have GIMP. Um, this is pretty much like the same as Adobe Photoshop. Um, in this case, it's version 2.84. I think they have 2.86 out right now. We just haven't updated yet. Um, again, we'll link to their website because they don't just give it right here. I believe it's just GIMP.org. But we will link in the video description. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's pretty much just, I mean, it's, whoops, I missed a zero in there. It's, uh, like I say, it's, it's a Photoshop kind of program. Um, you got your airbrushes, pencils, paintbrushes, all that kind of stuff. Um, by and large, what we use it for is more so to do textures for different things. I'm trying to think of which scene I have that in. I believe that scene is in here. Uh, we have, nope, we have the, doo -doo -doo -doo. it's here someplace. We have the ivy leaf that we use in the scene with the, uh, where we're using the Greek text and stuff. We do a lot of, I guess I really can't show it very good because I don't have everything I need here. But, base, well, I mean, it's a photo editor. I suppose I should just throw a photo in here just to give you a quick overview of what we can do with it. Um, let me see if I have just a plain old photo here someplace. There we go. It's not necessarily the best. It's pretty small. Um, but basically, well, actually... I should have a real one here. Give me one second to find this. Do, 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 do. We had an excellent picture 
from, um, I think his name was David, I believe. Where did I put that picture? Do, 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 do. It's here someplace. Um, yeah, I believe his name was David. He sent us a lovely photo. I think actually this is, yes, this is it. Okay, so he sent us this photo. Almost this photo. It wasn't actually this photo. Um, I'm trying to see if I left any. It had snow on it. Here you can kind of see all of this like green and black stuff that used to just be white because there was snow there. And where everywhere where there's this green moss type stuff, that used to be snow. Basically what we did, and I can still pretty much do it, uh, we have a select by color tool, and I just selected the white which here we have some snow so I can kind of overview here so we have some snow so pretty much we selected that and then took this it's like a moss paintbrush and we started with a relatively large size and we colored all this white in and we're like well we don't want that white to be white because it's going to be moss so then we had a basis down and then we just selected nothing and Kind of shrunk the brush size down to about 10, and we're like, well, let us... Actually, I don't think I shrunk the brush size that small. But nevertheless, we just kind of painted over the white outline that was still there. And la di la di la Not being near as careful as I was for the real stuff, because this portion you don't see in the video. Uh, it's kind of off screen. so But pretty much just painted over the snow and made it look like this so it looks like there's moss growing on the on the mountain here instead of there being snow on it because in the scene i complain about the heat well if there's snow out why am i complaining about heat so it made it a little more suitable for the purposes because this, this was like exactly the kind of the kind of picture we wanted you know me as the slightly delusional scientist you know used the time machine and I was thrown to some random place and I was complaining that, you know, these trails are hard on my feet and I'm not used to this. This has a really rough, rocky appearance. So this was exactly what we wanted, but it had snow on it. And I was like, we can't use snow because it needs to be in the summer. So did a little creative work on it and turned the snow into moss. So like I said, it's, it's a Photoshop replacement. So if you're looking for a high quality photo editor that can do all sorts of stuff, I mean, there's cropping, cloning, rotating, perspective distortion um you can put text in pretty much anything you could need to do on a photo you can do with gimp um so yeah again we'll have the description in the down or the we'll have the download link in the description rather and that's about that for the gimp uh this is kaden live this i believe is the only program that is not cross-platform to my knowledge, this is only a Linux program. There is some live bootable DVD version thing that you can use, which pretty much is you're booting Linux onto your computer so you can run Kden Live. Um, I tried it uh, probably about two years ago before I made the switch to Linux for just because I was sick and tired of Windows. <laughs> and um, I never got it to work. So I don't know if I was just doing something wrong or if the computer I had at the time couldn't process it i don't know but it didn't work um by now though that could have totally changed and it it might be working perfectly i don't know um but this is a video editor um for us we're pretty much just putting the clips together we're really not using any sort of too many special effects we do about sorry we pretty much just do like an alpha gradient which um let's see see if we can actually get that to show i don't think i can because i'd have to put a put a composite on here so that alpha gradient would have something to work with which let's go to a black i think okay yeah so i mean this is what we use for like the uh um fact sheets when we have the text fade in we're using an alpha gradient to do that um it's really i mean it's pretty much we're just using it 
to put our clips together here. Uh, it does have its own green screening. Um, they call it blue screen, but it is basically a green screen. It's really not going to show too much here because, well, A, my green screen is pretty bad. So we might be able to get a little bit going here by doing that. Actually, it doesn't work too bad. But because of all the stuff that's around me, we can't just run the green screen right through here. Um, it is kind of resource intensive and process heavy. Um, so I had to use, this is actually an outtake scene here. Um, so far we have three outtake clips from the entire movie. I was going to actually load up the real video project, but I couldn't play anything from that because they're mostly all slideshow clips, which basically is one photo for every frame. And the computer we have just can't process that kind of data that quickly. But I think that was probably garbage. That's my favorite outtake so far, me saying I think that was probably garbage after recording a clip. Um, so yeah, it can play the actual video, even though this is 60 frames a second, it can play it, but as a, um, as an image sequence, it just can't process that kind of data fast enough. And it's nothing wrong with the software. Um, if, if I had like an i7 processor on my computer here and I have eight gigs of RAM, so I don't think RAM's an issue. Uh, it could probably do it, but I don't have that kind of money to throw at a computer for this project so don't have that um but pretty much i mean you have that you can uh do little transitions between between the clips which it's probably not going to want to play very well but you have that um i mean it's, it's a video editor i really don't know it does have i guess i can kind of just show all the different effects here you have tons of audio effects. Um, I think actually, because of the nature of open source, sorry about that airplane flying past, most of the audio effects that you can hear are also actually in Audacity because they're both pulling from the same library. Um, but you have like color, color correction. They use OUR because they're based over in the UK, I guess. Crop and transform. You have different fades. You got fun little effects, charcoal vignettes you got some miscellaneous stuff which like cartooning that actually yeah i mean it's it's really not cartoon cartoon but it simplifies colors puts black lines between different enough colors whatever but yeah you got goofy effects um they're trying to put some sort of motion tracking into here uh, I don't think it's gotten in yet in the version, in the developmental version, I believe it's in there, um, but it's pretty slow as of yet. It also has DVD Wizard, so you can create the DVD from your video. Um, I don't actually know if we're going to be using the DVD Wizard in here when we go to make our DVD or not. Um, that kind of remains to be seen. That's kind of far away yet because um, there's a lot of work that has to be done after the video is finished before we can put it on the DVD. Uh, but that's pretty much Kaden Live. I kind of talked a lot and really didn't show much. But video editor works excellent. I highly recommend it if you are running Linux. This is uh, Krita. Here we go. This one I think actually may as well be just Linux. I'm not positive. Um, check out the website krita.org um it's more of a paint program than gimp is um gimp's more for like editing photos whereas krita is actually for like digitally painting if i had my tablet plugged in which i don't um you could see all the differences because they have like the the different pressure presets and kind of stuff so when you're using a tablet the hardness of how you push actually affects stuff using a mouse <laughs> you do not get that at all um for some reason that's not working but 
it has all these different brushes, different styles of brushes. Again, if I had my tablet plugged in, you would be able to see this. This is a really cool brush, actually. It kind of, when you turn it, it does cool things. Uh, but be that as it may, you've got, like, all the different hardnesses of the pencils, rakes to go through the colors, um, splatters, heavy splatters, blotchy splatters. Just a real basic one pixel brush. So lots and lots of an eraser. Lots and lots of options. Um, and you can really, you got layer control and everything. But you can edit these brushes too to like as much as you possibly could imagine. This is really, really powerful for painting. There are several, how did I make that go away? There are several guys that are like professional artists in the Linux community um, and outside of it as well. And they use Krita for their painting. They make stellar work. I mean, this is like, I would definitely, if you're into digital painting, I would recommend Krita over GIMP. You can do a lot of stuff with GIMP, don't get me wrong, but it's really more for photo editing. Krita really is more of a paint on canvas type program, not really so much designed for photo editing, though. You certainly could use it for that, but GIMP has more of the photo editing tools, and Krita is more the digital painting tools. Um, but yeah, again, I believe this one is a Linux only. I don't believe they may have some sort of Windows installers on their websites. Again, I would say check it out. I don't know for sure, but definitely is a very, very good program to use if you are into digital painting. Um, I mean, I, I really haven't used it super, super, super much um, just for making a couple textures for a few different objects and some scenes. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I know it's, it's very powerful. I've seen the work guys have done with it. Um, but, yeah, I, as far as, like, really showing all the different stuff you can do, I just don't know everything you can do with it. Um, but I do know there's a lot. So if you're looking for a digital painting program, I would recommend Krita.